there, this would be a great gift for your wife. Registration is just $35 and 20 for high school females. The first 150 women registered will receive a free gift, so register today. Karen Share is coming up Wednesday, March 27th. Help the community of Pueblo by telling someone you know to come down from 11 a.m. to noon to get free help with groceries. You can help by volunteering and even receive help yourself. For more information, contact Pastor Jim in the office. Sunday, April 14th will be the next parent-child dedication in the 10.30 a.m. service. This is an important step for a family in Christ. You can sign up in the lobby or with the Church Center app. There will be a dedication class the morning during the 9 a.m. service in the chapel. Invite your family and friends to share this special day. We love that you are here to celebrate Palm Sunday with all of us. Remember that this Friday is Good Friday, and we have a special noon service. And don't miss next Sunday for Easter, as we remember that Jesus rose from the grave to show us that hope grows here. Happy Palm Sunday, Praise Church. Let's have a great day celebrating our Messiah. I'm Alexis. And I'm John. Welcome to Praise Church. If you are here for the first time today, we would love to get to know you. Please text WELCOME to 719 419-8880. You can also scan the QR code on the screen or the seat in front of you. Please visit the welcome desk in the lobby because we have a special gift just for you. March 29th is Good Friday. We'll be having a noon service to remember the agony that Jesus endured as he became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Then Sunday, March 31st is the big day, Easter. This will be a big service and we're expecting lots of people to come and hear how Jesus is the answer. Now remember that next Sunday's service will be 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Stop by the invite kiosk and grab some cards and invite somebody to come out Friday and next Sunday. We want to reach as many people as possible this Easter season. It is Well Women's Conference is April 6th. We will have worship, fun games, and breakout sessions with amazing women of God. This is going to be a great time, so get registered with all of your friends. For your husbands out there, this would be a great gift for your wife. Registration is just $35 and 20 for high school females. The first 150 women registered will receive a free gift, so register today. Karen Share is coming up Wednesday, March 27th. Help the community of Pueblo by telling someone you know to come down from 11 a.m. to noon to get free help with groceries. You can help by volunteering and even receive help yourself. For more information, contact Pastor Jim in the office. Sunday, April 14th will be the next parent-child dedication in the 10.30 a.m. service. This is an important step for a family in Christ. You can sign up in the lobby or with the Church Center app. There will be a dedication class the morning during the 9 a.m. service in the chapel. Invite your family and friends to share this special day. We love that you are here to celebrate Palm Sunday with all of us. Remember that this Friday is Good Friday, and we have a special noon service. And don't miss next Sunday for Easter, as we remember that Jesus rose from the grave to show us that hope grows here. Happy Palm Sunday, Praise Church. Let's have a great day celebrating our Messiah. I'm Alexis. And I'm John. Welcome to Praise Church. If you are here for the first time today, we would love to get to know you. Please text WELCOME to 719 419-8880. You can also scan the QR code on the screen or the seat in front of you. Please visit the welcome desk in the lobby because we have a special gift just for you. March 29th is Good Friday. We'll be having a noon service to remember the agony that Jesus endured as he became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Then Sunday, March 31st is the big day, Easter. This will be a big service and we're expecting lots of people to come and hear how Jesus is the answer. Now remember that next Sunday's service will be 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Stop by the invite kiosk and grab some cards and invite somebody to come out Friday and next Sunday. We want to reach as many people as possible this Easter season. It is Well Women's Conference is April 6th. We will have worship, fun games, and breakout sessions with amazing women of God. This is going to be a great time, so get registered with all of your friends. For your husbands out there, this would be a great gift for your wife. Registration is just $35 and 20 for high school females. The first 150 women registered will receive a free gift, so register today. Karen Share is coming up Wednesday, March 27th. Help the community of Pueblo by telling someone you know to come down from 11 a.m. to noon to get free help with groceries. You can help by volunteering and even receive. Good morning, praise. I just want to invite you all to stand and worship. Let's just put our hands together this morning.
raise your hallelujah in this place today. They're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help me sing this. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a Hallelujah 
Good morning, Praise Assembly. How's it going? Somebody raise a hallelujah. Come on. Hey, do me a huge favor. Look to your neighbor. Give him a high five. Say, it's so good to see you on this Palm Sunday. Look at your second choice. Give them also a high five. Say, it's so good to see you on this Palm Sunday. You may take your seat. It is so good to see you. For those of you who don't know, I'm Pastor Danny. I have the honor and the privilege of being the student pastor here at Praise Assembly. Every week I get to work with your students, my students, our students, and it is an honor and a privilege. Hey, I also wanted to welcome our first-time visitors. Pastor Steve is out. He, him and his family, they're, they're down celebrating that he took some time to celebrate his birthday. Usually when Pastor Steve is out of office, it's usually at a national event or a district event where he's doing something related to ministry. But this weekend, him and his family went off to go celebrate his birthday. So when he comes back, make sure you let him know how much we missed him, how much we love him, and how old, I mean how young he looks. How young, 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 young. He's, hey, I'm going to get in trouble. He's going to come back all relaxed and rested and looking young. Okay. <laughs> But, but, but on that note, for if you're a first-time visitor, Pastor Steve would really, really love to get to con uh, connect with you. So if you'll do me a huge favor, if you will text WELCOME to 719-419-8880. When Pastor Steve comes back, he wants to connect with you. He wants to do this thing we call the journey of life. We want to do it with you. We want to do life with you here at Praise. So uh, either text that number or you can stop by the welcome desk, fill out a connection card, and take a, we have a free gift for you so you can pick that up at the welcome desk. You are a visitor once after that, your family. I said this in first service. For those of you who are from Pueblo, you know everybody knows everybody, right? You know we're like a big family, especially if you're Mexican like me. You got a big family, right? And you're just all a part of it. So, 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 yeah, make sure if you're a visitor, you're a visitor once. After that, your family. Those of you watching online, if you would just type in welcome in the comment section, we would also love to get connected with you. Um, there's a QR code that you can also scan uh, the, uh, to get connected with us. We also wanted to remind you that at Praise Assembly, we don't do tithe and offering. We don't pass anything around. You actually get to give on your way out. And I say get to give because it's an act of obedience. It's an act of worship. The two hardest things to walk away from are time and money. Time and money. And that's why God asks uh, that of us because he knows those, if he can get us to give us, to give him our time and our resources, then he's got our hearts. And so we, we you could do that. Uh, you could also give online. You could also, there's a QR code in the back of the chair in front of you. You can also scan that. Hey, let's pray for this morning's tithe and offering. Heavenly Father, God, we come to you this morning. First and foremost, God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Today, especially, Father, we celebrate and we thank you for Palm Sunday and the fact that Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled. God, and we thank you for what's to come. We thank you for Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. God, we thank you that we get to come together as a body united to celebrate those days. God, I ask this morning that you would anoint Pastor Robbie's lips that every word that he speaks, Father God, would be formed in the pavilions of glory and uttered over lips of clay. That they would penetrate the very heart and soul of every individual that is in this room. God, I, I ask that you would uh, be with the gift and the giver. That you would bless the giver. That you would give the, the team here and the board the wisdom, the knowledge to utilize those funds to advance your kingdom. God, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday, Praise Church. Let's have a great day celebrating our Messiah. I'm Alexis. And I'm John. Welcome to Praise Church. If you are here for the first time today, we would love to get to know you. Please text WELCOME to 719-419-8880. You can also scan the QR code on the screen or the seat in front of you. Please visit the welcome desk in the lobby because we have a special gift just for you. March 29th is Good Friday. We'll be having a noon service to remember the agony that Jesus endured as he became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Then Sunday, March 31st is the big day, Easter. This will be a big service and we're expecting lots of people to come and hear how Jesus is the answer. Now remember that next Sunday's service will be 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. 
Stop by the invite kiosk and grab some carts and invite somebody to come out Friday and next Sunday. We want to reach as many people as possible this Easter season. It is Well Women's Conference is April 6th. We will have worship, fun games, and breakout sessions with amazing women of God. This is going to be a great time, so get registered with all of your friends. For your husbands out there, this would be a great gift for your wife. Registration is just $35 and $20 for high school females. The first 150 women registered will receive a free gift, so register today. Karen Share is coming up Wednesday, March 27th. Help the community of Pueblo by telling someone you know to come down from 11 a.m. to noon to get free help with groceries. You can help by volunteering and even receive help yourself. For more information, contact Pastor Jim in the office. Sunday, April 14th will be the next parent-child dedication in the 10.30 a.m. service. This is an important step for a family in Christ. You can sign up in the lobby or with the Church Center app. There will be a dedication class the morning during the 9 a.m. service in the chapel. Invite your family and friends to share this special day. We love that you are here to celebrate Palm Sunday with all of us. Remember that this Friday is Good Friday, and we have a special noon service. And don't miss next Sunday for Easter, as we remember that Jesus rose from the grave to show us that hope grows here.
morning. How are you all today? Happy Palm Sunday. That was weird. Happy, let's do that again. Happy Palm Sunday. My palms are sweaty, so that made it worse. No, I just want to thank you guys for being here and um, welcome you all to Palm Sunday service. Didn't that worship team just do a phenomenal job? <laughs> Holy cow. I was down here watching the kids and it just, um, it just brings me to tears to see kids worship God. It's amazing, isn't it? Just their little hearts just billowing out with love and excitement and anticipation for God. And then to Jackie and Johnny, look at this set, you guys. Isn't this beautiful, the work they've done? Yeah, please. Man, you know the spirit's in it when your shirt matches the sarape on the back. Huh? For those of you that don't know, the blankie. I sure, uh, you'll get it on the way home. Anyway, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm, I'm very excited about today. Um, this word is not going to be easy to digest, but um, it's a word from the Lord, and I want to just thank Pastor Steve. Don't you love Pastor Steve and Miss Bonnie? Man, such great leaders. Uh, I'm so grateful to be under his leadership and... and um, that he's trusted me today to bring the word to you on Palm Sunday. This is my first Palm Sunday to preach, so I'm, I'm extra uh, excited about that. So um, I want to give you guys a little historical background about Palm Sunday. And I know we can dissect this word. We can, man, we can chew into it and do um, a lot with it. But I'm going to focus on some areas. I just want to give you a brief background. Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem or other no, otherwise known as the Holy Week, it's when we celebrate Jesus as Lord of Lords, right? We just heard songs, hosannas, um, praising God for what he's done, who he is, all that, right? Well, it was that Sunday before Jesus would be crucified and the great Passover festival would begin, Jews from all over the region would rally into Jerusalem for this great festival. Uh, the festival was a day to remember the exodus that took place in Egypt. So if you go to Exodus 12 in your Bibles, um, and I'll turn there real quick. I'm not going to read a whole bunch of it. But uh, you guys know the story. I don't have to go much into it. But this is where God would speak to Moses and Aaron, and he would say, sacrifice a goat or a, goat or a lamb, and and uh, paint your door frame with uh, the blood of the sacrifice. The angel of death will pass over. And that's where we get the word Passover. He'll pass over and the people of Israel will not perish. And you guys, like I said, you can read that word. Um, I want to read you from Exodus 12, 14. It says, uh, this day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a fat feast. And I think this is fascinating when you start putting together a sermon and you start asking God to help you, because obviously I couldn't do this in my own strength. But I've asked him to help me, and, and when he finished this thing, and I went back and I read this, I was like, wow, this is, this is why we come today, is for this passage of scripture right here. This day shall be for you, a memorial day. Isn't that what this is? It's a memorial day. It's a memorial day. That you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And did we not just see generations up here? Isn't that beautiful how God does these things? You see, as these people gathered in Jerusalem, another group was watching closely as well as you saw in that video, there's these people, they're called the Pharisees, we're keeping an eye on this crowd for two reasons, because any kind of revolt against Rome would bring the Roman Empire down on them. Also challenging the authority and power of the Pharisees was considered disrespectful. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Palm Sunday is also a day of excitement and anticipation. You saw the little faces, even maybe your little face is really excited with anticipation. 
You see, by this time, Jesus was extremely well known. Everyone coming to Jerusalem had heard of him. Have you heard of Jesus? Are you excited about Jesus? See, hailing him as their king under a canopy of palm branches, the people were excited to see Jesus. The anticipation the people felt was due in large part to their misunderstanding of Jesus. They had the misconception that he would free them from Roman oppression, when in fact, actually, Jesus' coming would free them from their own oppression, sin. See, oppression is defined as prolonged, cruel, or unjust treatment or control. So I want to ask you a question. How long have you allowed sin to control you? I told you this word isn't going to be easy, but we're going to get through it. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to allow God's word to penetrate our hearts, much like it did for me when I first came to Jesus. You see, Palm Sunday should remind us to guard against offering superficial acclaim for Christ. Every year we come to church at this time and we hear that Jesus is returning to the city of Jerusalem in order that he fulfill his mission. And you know, his mission, of course, is to die on a cross that we through our sin put him on. But yet, we still haven't grasped the importance of getting ready for his return. Every year we talk about Christmas and his birth, and then we talk about Easter and his crucifixion. But yet we're not ready for his return. We're not getting prepared for his return. You see, in Deuteronomy 9, 23 and 24, it says, And when the Lord sent you out from Kadesh Barnea, he said, Go up and take possession of the land I have given you. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You see, we're just coming out of this series in Joshua, and hasn't he been telling Joshua, go up and take that land, go take that land, go take that land, go take that land. And he says, take possession of the land that I have given you, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You did not trust him or obey him. You've been rebellious against the Lord ever since I've known you. So he's given you the land, but you've been rebellious against him, and you haven't taken possession of the land he's given you. But I do this on Palm Sunday. I've been rebellious, it says, ever since the Lord has known me. So the focus of this uh, sermon today is in Matthew 21, 1 through 11. If you'd like to turn with me there in your Bibles or if you have it on your little device there, you can turn there. And We also have notes that maybe you guys were given that you can follow along. This is a lengthy portion of scripture, but this is where we're going to focus our attention. It says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. That right there shows his sovereignty. And he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. While others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, the crowds that went ahead of, that, of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's pray. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. I pray that you would discipline me, Lord, but not in due measure, 
not in your anger, or you will reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the peoples who do not call you on your name. For they have devoured Jacob. They have devoured him completely and destroyed his homeland. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to focus on uh, this first part of the series. We're going to talk about the donkey. So I'll keep saying donkey. And you guys will get it. Because I'll keep talking about the donkey. Because if God can use a donkey, and if he can use a worm, and if he can use a well, then he can surely use me. Amen? Amen. I heard it like this. God speaks whale. He told the whale to swallow up Jonah, didn't he? And that whale obeyed God. Verses 2 through 5, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. Again, that's God's sovereignty right there. Say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what your, was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now see, again, we can dissect this thing all the way down to war horses and and donkeys and the meanings of what that all means, but I just, I really want to focus on why was it a donkey? And in this scripture, it says it was to fulfill prophecy. What prophecy? Zechariah 9.9 tells us, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So again, like I said earlier, this Old Testament prophecy, the, the things that were being said in Exodus and Deuteronomy in the Old Testament are now being said in the New Testament to fulfill prophecy. See, the Jesus that we know that was coming was to fulfill prophecy. And in Isaiah 62, 11, it says, the Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see, your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. Now, if you're curious like me, that word recompense stood out. And I didn't know what that meant. So I wanted to go see what that meant. And what Isaiah is saying is that along with Jesus comes his compensation for the suffering that will incur. See, he re his reward is within him. Eternal life is with Jesus when we believe in him. So right there, Isaiah says his recompense accompanies him. So you see how in the Old Testament they were talking about one that is greater is coming and then here he comes and now they're saying that, hey, if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. That's Romans 10, 9, and 10, right? For those of you that read your Bible. So again, we can dissect donkeys. We can figure out, hey, he came in on a donkey because of this reason and war horses meant he was coming to start a fight. But donkeys in the Old Testament were the main modes of transportation. They were the original SUV. Huh? The all-purpose vehicle of that time. They carried the load. What were they carrying? The load. They came in carrying Jesus. So I kept asking, why the donkey? Took me to Philippians 2, 7 through 8. It says, rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And so here he comes on this donkey. Oh, hail Jesus. Why a donkey? 
1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29. It says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not. For what purpose? To nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. But Jesus is coming. Our king is coming. And everybody said, who's this? Not understanding. Took me to Jeremiah 10, 1 through 3. It says, hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest and a craftsman shapes it into his chisel, by his chisel. I've been reading you guys about these eclipses and uh, the red heifer that they're going to be sacrificing. And the eclipse is supposed to be a signif signifying the coming of the Lord is what I'm hearing. Okay? But if I read my Bible, the Bible tells me something different in Zechariah 9.10. It tells me he's, it says, I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. He will rule with extent. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. You see, I don't need an eclipse to tell me that Jesus is coming. I don't need social media to tell me when Jesus is coming. I can read my Bible and it tells me Jesus is coming. And you know what else I can read in Revelation 19.11? What does it say? I saw heaven standing open and true, and there before me was a white horse. So there's your war horse. He's on a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. Amen. I don't need an eclipse to tell me that God's coming. But I sit and I wave this thing. You see again in Revelation 19.11, this is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy in Isaiah 63. Look, it says, coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword, but it says in Isaiah 63, who is this coming from Edom and Bozrah with his garments stained crimson? Who is this? Didn't we just hear that back here? Um, the people were saying, who is this? And here they're saying, who is this? It is I proclaiming victory, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone from the nations. No one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. It was for me the day of vengeance, the year for me to redeem had come. Hmm. Took me to a Philippians 2, 9 through 10. It says, therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every name should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth. So Jesus is riding in on a donkey. I don't know who he is, but I'm doing this. And it says right there, their blood splattered my garments. If you think Easter is about a bunny, you're in the wrong place. Easter is about a cross. And this is Old Testament. So this is Old Testament. This is why it's important to read the Bible, all 66 books. Old Testament, the book of knowledge, Proverbs, Psalms, and the New Testament. Why? So that I understand what the Bible's saying so that I don't get caught up doing what? Learning the ways of the nations. You see, because when Jesus comes back, he's not going to be on a donkey. He's going to be on a white horse. And he's coming to pick a fight, y'all. Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? You see, because if I don't understand who he is, oh, Jesus, takes me to part two. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Maybe you're sitting out there today saying, who's this? This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Galilee. You see, Hosanna means save us. Hosanna is from Hebrew and related to Aramaic, meaning save, rescue, or savior. Can I just say talk is cheap and the demand is high? We can say we follow God, but living like we mean it is much more important. You see, they knew God, but they didn't know God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? Have you guys ever been excited when a celebrity comes around in your area or you've ever gone somewhere where a celebrity is and everybody's going, who is that? Who is that? Right? And you get rush over there. Who is this? Oh, that's just LeBron. Oh, that's just... Right? Who is this? They recognized him and his claim to be king, but failed to make him their king. Save us. Save us. Save us. How many of us today wave our palm branches and say, Save us? Save us, God. Save us from our circumstances. But don't save me from my internal turmoil. I just want my external saved, right? See, we say save us, but we're not interested or concerned about making him our Lord, allowing him to change us, talking about, oh yeah, me and Jesus, we're boys. Yeah. I don't need to go to church. I can worship him from my home comforts of my own home I don't I don't I like this one I like this one I don't like people then why are you trying to get to heaven huh oh I don't need to go to church to worship and plus there's a bunch of people and people ah, I don't do people but you're trying to get to heaven and guess who's going to be in heaven people So some of you may have been here last time I preached, but I talked about a wheelbarrow. You guys remember the wheelbarrow? Yeah. Running around with these little wheelbarrows. Everybody's cooking around with a little wheelbarrow on them. Or like the Bible would say, the old, the dead body, right? The old man, right? We've been made new, but we're carrying around this dead body. 
because we won't let him go because I really like my anger and I want to hold on to it. So I put it in this wheelbarrow and I cruise around with these wheelbarrows. You know what those wheelbarrows are full of? They're full of pride, envy, jealousy, malice, division, hate, shame, guilt, fear. And we're cruising around going like this. Oh, we may even go like this too. So here's the new addition is right here. So now I'm carrying this wheelbarrow and I'm going, oh, but save me, Jesus. Save me. And he's like, why are you asking me to save you? I already did it. Oh, oh, well, but I have this wheelbarrow. Yeah, let it go. Let it go. But I don't want to. So you know what Jesus says? In Matthew 15, 7 through 9, he says, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. See, this is where I get my title for my sermon today is because it says those people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Lip service. I'll give you lip service all day long. I can talk a good game with you all day long, right? But when it's time to do some work, when it's time to get up, when it's time to let go, oh no, I, I can't let go of that. What do you mean? Do you know how bad he hurt me in that divorce? Took all my money. But I'm waving this thing, and I'm saying, save me. Uh, but he, I don't have, no. And then guess what else we do? We take that wheelbarrow full of hate, judgment, jealousy, unforgiveness. And you know what we do? We go up to the next person, boom. We back that bad boy up and we dump it right on somebody. And then you know what we do after that? We wave these things and we call it reverence. Oh, but I love Jesus. I go to church, I study the Bible. Me and Jesus, we're boys, man. And I'm doing this but I'm not letting him change my heart. Didn't, didn't he say that? You hypocrites, with your lips, you honor me, but your hearts are far from me. Ah, what do you mean I gotta stop smoking weed? That one just hit. Just like that weed hits, huh? Don't think I don't know. I was this guy right here. I was this guy. Oh, yeah, Pastor. It's good stuff. Or anger. What about your anger? Anybody love anger? No? Now you're all holy? Now everybody's holy? Everybody come to church, you're holy? Huh? Oh, my goodness. What about unforgiveness? Oh, I can't forgive him. I can't forgive her. I'm going to carry that around. I've been carrying that around for 30 years. It's become who I am. You ever heard people say, it's just who I am? But wait, the Bible tells me I'm a new person. So if I'm a new person, then I shouldn't be carrying that around with me. Right? I'm just asking. I don't know. I read the Bible. I'm trying to figure it out myself. Because I'm too busy doing this. And then... Boom, drop it like it's hot. Huh? Huh? Calling it reverence. Oh, I fear the Lord. Is that why that's what you're doing behind closed doors? You don't think that God doesn't know what you're doing behind a closed door? You think a closet, you can hide in a closet from God? Smacking your wife around after church. You see, Jesus applies Isaiah words to the religious leaders, those Pharisees, those ones you saw in that video that put Jesus on the cross, the same ones that put Stephen, that, that stoned Stephen, that martyred all the disciples. You see, these Pharisees 
They knew a lot about God. They studied his word. But they didn't know God. Do you know God? Because we say we know God, right? Oh, yeah, I know God. Oh, yeah. He's my Savior. But he hasn't... He's not my Lord. See, we claim to honor God with our hearts while our hearts are distant from him or preoccupied with things such as that wheelbarrow, right? Carrying that wheelbarrow around. And so guess what happens? Our worship, waving this palm branch, means nothing. So I'm too preoccupied with that wheelbarrow. You know what I do with that wheelbarrow is I... I, uh, I fancy it up. I get some nice wheels. Give me some pretty wheels, and I put some pretty wheels on it, and I give me the handles that can really carry a heavy load. You know? Huh? You know those ones in wheelbarrows you can carry a big load with? Because I like to carry that load around. And what, is, what does the Bible say? Cast all your what? All your fears. But yet I'm carrying them around. Because I, I, I read this Bible. Yeah, I read the Bible. Then why aren't you doing what it says? See, it's not enough to learn about religion or act religiously or even study the Bible. Our actions and our attitudes must be sincere. Yet we're full of envy and pride and malice and jealousy Unforgiveness, oh, watch this one, self-righteousness, huh? Walk around all self-righteous. Yet waving that palm branch, oh, yeah. You know, you really need to come to Jesus. No, you really need to get to know Jesus. You see, save us from the external, but don't save me from the internal. I don't want to talk to you about what's going on internally in my, in my life. And I'm only saying this, you guys, because this is stuff I had to walk through in my own life. Every time I'm up here, I tell you, this is stuff I had to walk through. I had to do this. This isn't something I'm telling you to do that I wouldn't do. I'm not that person. I'm in the dirt just as much as you are. That's why I have to continually get myself in this word. I have to continually be around like-minded people. I have to be around my people at church because you guys will hold me accountable. You'll remind me, hey, pastor, you know that thing you're doing? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. See, conviction is God's love. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit does? He convicts us of our sins, right? So that little inner that you have when you're doing something you know you shouldn't be doing, that's the Holy Spirit telling you, you need to turn from that. Because, you know, you could wake up early in the morning and you start going like that. And then before you know it, those pictures start showing up, huh? Oh. Is that too much? Because now all of a sudden, there they are. Oh, look, there she is. Boom. See, discipline is God's love, right? So I heard it like this. I'd rather be in Hebrews 12 than in Romans 1. What does that even mean? That means I'd rather be disciplined by God than turned over to my sin. So when you read your Bible, you'll see in Hebrews 12, a good father disciplines their child just like God disciplines us. Right? But we don't want to listen to that because you're messing up my life. I asked you to be my Savior, but I didn't ask you to be my Lord. And now you're all jacking me up invading spaces I don't want you to invade because, man, I really like that thing. Right? So what happens in Romans 12 is he disciplines 
or in Hebrews 12, but in Romans 1, what he does is he gives you over to your sins. So I don't need an eclipse to tell me that Jesus is coming because my Bible tells me that we're already under judgment because of all the sexual immorality that's going on in this world. And right here in America, he's already given us over to the sin. <laughs> but here comes Jesus. Jesus! This is why I speak to them in parables, he says in Matthew 13, 13 through 15. He says, though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, you will ever be hearing but never understanding. You will ever be seeing but never perceiving. For this people's hearts has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their e eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn. And I would heal them. Otherwise, but I can't see, even though I can see. I can hear, but I can't hear. I know who he is, but I don't know who he is. You see, when Jesus fails to meet your expectations, your hosannas turn into crucify him. I want Jesus just to, you know, be my savior. I don't want him to be Lord and start cleaning out my life. And then all of a sudden my life gets, why does my life get worse? Does it get worse or does it get better because now you're starting to see all your sin? So the last part of this sermon, part three, and I'll ask the worship team to start making their way towards the stage. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3 says, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying peace and safety, right? Peace and safety, Destruction will come on them as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Or why don't we do this? Why don't we go to the parable of the bridesmaids in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, and look what it says there. It says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Okay, save us, Jesus, but we don't want to do anything to prepare for your coming, in essence. But the wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Huh, who else fell asleep? The disciples in the garden fell asleep. Do you remember that? Oh, Jesus, it's taking too long. I'm going to go sleep. You see, the prophecy in Zechariah happened 500 years previous. But you can't even wait a couple of years. And then what? Your expectations... He doesn't meet your expectations, so your hosannas turn into crucify him. I don't need Jesus then. Why is Jesus doing then? All of a sudden, the wise start coming out, right? So at midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out, right? Give us some of your oil. Hey, I'll come to church. Mom asked me to come to church, and then maybe I can get me a little ham dinner at the end. Give me some of your oil, because I don't want to do any work. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to ask God into my heart, and I don't want him to start working on me and convicting me. I just want to say, save me. Save me from my circumstances for right now. Ooh! 
I'm over the toilet bowl saying, save me. Too graphic? But you're not thinking about that when you're sinning. But now all of a sudden you come to church and, oh, pastor, you can't talk like that. Well, you can act like it. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while the virgins were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. You guys keep reading. It says, and the door was shut. This is why I'm asking you guys, are you ready? You know how many funerals we do? Pastor Steve talks about it all the time, how many funerals he does in a week. And you know the most common statement made in a funeral? It happened so fast. I didn't have enough time. If I would have just, if I would have just, I just talked to him. I just talked to him. He says, he says, the door's going to shut. The door's going to shut. And later, the others came and they're saying, Lord, Lord, open the door, open the door, open the door. Open the door, don't you know who I am? I've cast out demons in your name. But Jesus replied, truly I tell you, I don't even know you. What? Please open the door. Please open the door. You see, we want to sing Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us. Your life is but a vapor, James says. You're here and you're gone. You don't know the day, but yet you're playing, you're playing with fire when you say, I'll just wait till my dying day and then I'll just ask God to be. You don't know when that day's going to be. It says it in his word, and you're trying to determine it by an eclipse. Jesus comes not to conquer by force his earthly kings, but by love, grace, mercy, and his own sacrifice for his people. Do you guys remember what I told you about Exodus 12? You guys, this is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. It's happening right now today. What does it say? Go back there. Look. This is a day for you, a memorial day. A memorial day. Because... He's the sacrifice that saves us from death today. But I only want you to save me from my circumstances, not from eternal hell. He conquers not nations, but hearts and minds. And instead of saying crucify him, why don't you say crucify me? You see, because the word says, I have been crucified with Christ, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm going to ask that the worship team sing a song for us. These altars are open. Try. 
God, that you would help us to make you the cornerstone of our lives in everything that we do, God, that you are the foundation that will never be shaken, God. Be our cornerstone. Be our rock. Be our rock today, God.
You guys, Jesus accused the religious leaders of shutting the door to the kingdom of heaven. The Pharisees were converting people to, the, to religion, not to God. And Jesus condemned the Pharisees and religious leaders for outwardly appearing upright and free of sin, but inwardly remaining full of corruption and greed. Living out our faith merely to impress others is like washing only the outside of a cup. When God cleans us on the inside, our cleanliness on the outside won't be a sham. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are running out. Don't be like these foolish ones, the curious, but be wise like the ones who are committed to Jesus. Get yourselves ready. Get yourself prepared by allowing God to be your Lord and Savior. Amen. You see, again, Easter isn't about a bunny. It's about a cross. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And we don't know what time that is. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So that same mouth that says, save me, can now ask God to be Lord over your life. From the comfort of your own chair, right there where you're sitting, you can simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Would you please come and be my Lord? Would you forgive me of my sin? And would you guide me the rest of my days? In Jesus' name, amen. This upcoming Friday is Good Friday. We have a message and we have a service at noon, so I want to encourage all of you to come at noon this Friday and agonize with us in the garden. Amen? Can I pray over you guys? Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your powerful word. Lord, may we not just confess it and profess it with our mouth, but may we believe it in our hearts and may we make you Lord of our life that you may guide us all the days of our life here on earth. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. Amen. Give God praise. I want to thank you all. May you have a wonderful Palm Sunday. God bless you.